Hello everybody, welcome to part 3 of my video series on offlane. In this one we're going to be talking about what hero you want to be picking. Now, this depends a lot, uh, depending on um, what site, sort of heroes that you can comfortably play, but I recommend you go into your hero select thing and create new, and making a template. This is what I basically look at every time I play a game of ranks. I haven't updated it in a while, it doesn't matter. So. First of all, you're going to want to have some heroes that you can play in basically any game. If you're playing ranked, this means that someone is not picking in the, and you guys are just losing two gold over and over again. Someone has to pick, right? I recommend having heroes that it doesn't matter what kind of matchup you're in. It doesn't matter how your lane goes. I can play Mars at minute 10, even if I'm level 6 with 2k net worth, for example. Same with all these heroes. They have some form of utility. They don't depend on items or they have very universally decent lanes. There's very few Legion Commander counters. There's very few DK counters. There's very few Centaur War Runner counters in lane. The next ones I think you are going to want to have are the sort of heroes that you can pick that are going to auto win games if you see what you want to see. If I see that they have very low damage cores or melee heroes, Sand King and Axe, Bounty Hunter, Underlord, these are going to be very, very powerful. They're going to have very high sort of possibilities. Like you can have Vanguard, Blink, Blade Mill by minute 11 on Axe if you're having a good game. So have some heroes that you can like punish pick them with. Batrider would belong here as well. I don't play that much. Timbersaw. These sort of like last phase picks. Then I have some miscellaneous categories. AoE. If I see that my first two picks are like Undying plus Ench or just things with very little AoE, the enemy team can always pick PL, TB, Naga and just have a free game. It's very difficult for your mid or your carry to be picking a lot of these anti-illusion counters and one usually isn't enough. If I see we have absolutely no AoE in the first phase, I'll think about picking something with a little bit of AoE. Next, we just have the standard second phase picks. These are the types of heroes that I will pick in the second phase after seeing the enemy supports and my own supports. There's basically two ways to go about picking. The first would be to counter the enemy position 5. The second would be to complement your own position 4 or 5. There's also some other ones like countering the overall game plan of the two supports they show or helping the game plan of the overall two supports you show. But generally speaking, we're talking about the first category. What I mean by that is... If the enemy team is picking something like a Jakiro pos 5, for example, even if you don't see their carry, you can now very safely pick Legion Commander because now you can purge off his Q, which is his main harass tool in lane, and no matter what carry they pick, it's like their position 5 is not a hero in lane, and you're going to have a position 4 that's going to be decent against their carry, hopefully. As a result, if you see something that's very, very easily countered by a specific hero, like Disruptor against Legion, Jakiro against Legion, Dazzle against Legion, or something like Dazzle against Undying position 5, or Slardar against Ogre position 5, or anything like that, I recommend you just pick it. On the flip side, if you have a position 4 that has quite a lot of synergy with something, for example, if you have a lean on your team, I recommend picking like a stun, uh, like Sand King. You can stun into stun. If you have something like Earth Spirit, I recommend the same. If you have like a Phoenix, you can pick Mars to combine your ults. If you have Dark Willow, you can pick Mars to combine your ults. If you have like a uh, Dark Seer position 4, let's say, maybe you can pick Axe or something, or Dazzle position 4. These are some examples. If you see that the enemy two supports have very little push, uh, let's say they have, um, I don't know, like Oracle and... Um, Ogre, let's just say. They're not going to really be able to pressure towers with these heroes. You can pick something like Magnus and it, you'll be sure that you can empower your carry for the whole game and win late game. But I recommend just sticking to individual hero matchups until you're comfortable with the game. Um, the next thing I would say is that certain position 5s have very specific counters. Like if they have like a Chen, something like a Doom can just eat his creep as well. If they pick like a Dazzle, Act can obviously dunk his... Um, through his shallow grave so try to really understand the individual matchups and the best way to learn is not to read it off a screen or hear about it but to just experiment play against jakiras pick legion commander see what happens pick slada see what happens pick mars see what, see what happens and then you'll have a your own sort of template for knowing the matchups there's about 20 position fives i'd say that are meta there's about 20 uh, offlane is that meta you technically only have to play 400 games to understand what the matchups are like. 
I then have my ranged heroes. I like to pick a ranged hero with a melee pulse 4 usually. I like to pick a melee pulse 4 with a ranged pulse 4. Uh, pulse 3 with a melee, uh, ranged pulse 4. I have Axe and Bristle in their own little category. This is if the game is just getting ruined and I have to play solo off lane. I'll just um, play from the second wave onwards and cut behind the tower and play 1v2 essentially. It's, this is not too important. I have some position 4s. I have some position 5s, I have some mids, and I have some carries. I recommend even if you want to become an offlane only player, you play one or two heroes on the other roles. I basically play Bane only, I basically play Tiny only, I basically play TA, and uh, pretty much just Faces Void on the other roles. If you play one hero, it makes it a little bit easier to play off role. If you look at my Bane, I have a 51.2% win rate. If you look at that from a negative point of view, you can say that, oh, whenever I play Bane, I don't win much MMR. But I, when I look at my friends who only play one position, anytime they're off role, they're playing all sorts of random shit. They're not really sure how to play the role. They're not sure how to play the hero. And they have like 30% win rate. If you have 10% games you lose automatically just because you're playing off role and you don't know what to do, even if you can limit that number to 5%, it makes your life a lot easier. With a, if you lose 10% of your games automatically, you have to win 60% of your remaining games. If you only lose 5%, it's something like 55%, which is a lot more attainable and reasonable. It's going to make your life a lot easier as well. So I recommend having something like this. And I recommend um, picking a hero that complements your team. Don't just randomly pick heroes or don't just pick into enemy counter picks. Now, in captain's mode, it's a little bit different. The offlane is usually picked in the first phase, I'd say. You usually don't have too much room to wiggle. I just recommend picking a strong offlane duo. If you're playing captain's mode a lot and you're basically having to play in the first phase, I recommend learning these heroes without any counters. Like Mars is always going to be good. Same with uh, like Sand King is usually going to be quite strong. Same with Legion Commander. Um, if you're more of like a second phase type player, you can see their carry first and then pick it. I don't recommend picking things with very high variability in how they play in the first phase. So I wouldn't pick Slardar in the first phase. They can just pick Troll or TB and you're going to have a really bad game. But no matter what they pick against Mars, you're going to have a decent game. So I think having a good amount of options is also good. Now, the next part is how many heroes should I play? I know a lot of people say you should only play one or two heroes and then yada 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 you learn the different matchups i recommend you play like three or four heroes on your main role at least um but you want to make it a little bit diverse so if i played for example sand king mars Lada, like that's three heroes technically but they have very similar sort of matchups Slada is generally going to win against melee heroes um so is mars really and so is sand king so you want to have some heroes that sort of diversify against all sorts of threats you want to have one hero that's good against ranged heroes like drow and venge and things uh you want to have a hero that's good against illusion heroes you want to have a hero that's good against like high armor heroes low armor heroes you want to make it so that you can play against most of the meta carries at the very least so uh if you are feeling really sort of confident and your team is giving you a late pick you can always just carry the game if you learn something like Batrider or Enigma or Beastmaster. You can just have a really free game and carry. So I recommend if you're mainly going to be playing ranked that you learn these sort of um, average heroes with average matchups. If you're more of like a high level player or like a captain's mode player, you just learn Beastmaster or something. Eventually you're going to just win some game for free on the 21st pick.